Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing my Best in Beauty 2021. I'm a little behind and I was almost contemplating not doing this video because I just did my Sephora recommendations and then I did top three each category a few months back. But when I went over that video and I was looking over my recommendations, sometimes things change and it really just depends on my mood. Also my skin depends on the time of year. So some of my picks are a little bit different than my top three each category that I think I filmed when it was warmer out. So most of these you're not gonna be shocked by. Actually, probably 99%. You're probably gonna be like, girl, we already know. But I've been getting so many requests to do this video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it for you guys. I'm gonna be moving quickly. I will also link below my recommendations in my top three each category, just so if there's something that I didn't mention today that you're like, wait, I thought she liked that, you can go back to those videos. I have to say there's some uh, areas that I didn't find really anything that wowed me this year and then there's some areas that there was too many to mention so it was really hard for me to choose. So if I miss something or I don't talk about a product you know I love, it doesn't mean I don't love it anymore. There's literally like a thousand lipsticks, a thousand blushes. I mean, there's just a lot of certain categories that I really couldn't choose, so I just did my best to talk about the ones that I probably use the most. So if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. If you enjoy these Best in Beauty videos, please give this video a thumbs up. I will link all the products I talk about today down below in my description box, and let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm gonna go in the order I would apply my makeup and today we are just doing makeup. If you wanna know my favorite like perfume, skincare, body care, definitely check out my recent favorites videos. I rave about stuff in them all the time and I didn't want this video to be way too long. I actually didn't find a new primer this year that really replaced any holy grails. Of course I switch it up, but there really wasn't a standout that I thought was worthy of mentioning like best of the year that I can think of. So we're gonna jump right into foundation. I really only have two that I wanna mention. Again, I tried to really kind of hone in and not go crazy and talk about a ton of different foundations. So the one that I wanna talk about first is the Lawless Conceal the Deal. I really like this foundation. I feel like it is a medium coverage. It wears super well, very thin formula. It is a matte foundation. They do say it's self-setting and I could definitely see that, although I do set all my foundations. I would describe this as the NARS soft matte lighter version. So it has less coverage, it's not as heavy, it's not as drying, but it has a similar feel to it. And the reason I like it is it wears well and it really just smooths out my texture. So this is definitely a pick for me. Also, I really like the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. It has a light coverage, buildable to a light medium, but this is my go-to if I'm gonna be wearing a lot of cream products, if I want something hydrating. It lasts pretty well and it's not over dewy or sticky or goopy so it's not one of those that I feel like is transferring all day or making my texture look really bad. I have different preferences depending on the day so if I'm on camera it's a whole nother preference than maybe my daily life where I'm just kind of hanging out with my family so I have to keep that in mind when I am recommending products. The Lawless can be full glam or every day and the NARS is more of an every day but both of these products I love. I'm still loving the same foundations from last year as well and oftentimes I do mix in those matte foundations foundations with these. In terms of concealer, there was quite a few this year that I enjoyed, but when I thought about my favorites, I have to give it to the ABH Magic Touch. This is very hydrating, great coverage, just looks beautiful under the eyes. Again, whether you wanna do full glam or every day, if you have dry under eyes, I think you'd really like this because it still offers coverage. And then the second one would be the Kosas Revealer. These are honestly very similar. I would say the Kosas has a little bit less coverage and the Kosas is a little bit thinner, whereas the ABH is more of like a heavy duty, a couple dots, and you really get that nice hydrated coverage under your eye. So if you're struggling with dry under eyes, which I definitely have this year, these two would be my top picks for you. Moving into powders, I am still ride or die for my Huda Beauty Pound Cake, but I have to say the Haley's Beauty Retouch is just up there. I wanna tell the differences quickly because I get this question a lot. The Haley's Beauty and the Huda Beauty are equally as smoothing. The only difference is the Huda Beauty is a little bit lighter because they have more shades, so I choose Pound Cake, which it's just lighter for my under eye area, and the Haley's Beauty is just one shade. It's more of a yellow tone, so it's not as bright so oftentimes I will use the Huda Beauty under my eyes and then use the Haley's Beauty everywhere else 
great smoothing, nice light set, not heavy, just super, super smoothing, gives you that matte effect without being dry. This powder is phenomenal. And then I have two powders I want to talk about that are pressed powders. These are more so touch-up powders or powders that I use when I want to add a little bit more coverage in certain areas. The first one being the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. So you don't often see me use this on camera, but obviously it's well-loved. This is one of those powders I use sometimes if I feel like I've used a foundation that doesn't have enough coverage and I'm looking a little bit uneven or blotchy. Usually I use like the Sonia G Face One and I'll just go under my contour. Also, I will touch up with this powder. This is another powder that I can use on my forehead area because the shade's a little bit deeper. It's just one of those that adds a little bit of coverage, also kind of soaks up your oils. I don't tend to use pressed powders as much in my T-zone. I typically stick with the Haley's Beauty or the Huda Beauty for my T-zone. And then another powder I really love is the One Size Powder. This is the Turn Up the Base. I have used quite a bit of this. I'm probably gonna hit pan very soon. Very similar to the Fenty Beauty. This is one that I can use to touch up mostly when I feel like I'm getting a little bit oily. Like right now, I would take my beauty sponge and I would just press this into the skin. And because this shade is quite light, I can use this one more so on my T-zone. So this powder I use the same way I use the Fenty Beauty, oftentimes just to touch up before I'm filming or during filming or when I'm out. So you don't see them on camera as much, but I use them pretty much every day. Moving on to bronzer, I really could only think of one that I felt stood out to me this year. Again, I kind of stick with the same ones that I loved last year, so some things really didn't change much. This one is the Physician's Formula Matte Bronzer in Matte Sunkissed. I use this a lot. The reason I love this so much is it's effortless. This is one of those you cannot overdo. It will never look muddy, and it gives you this really warm, suntan sort of look without obviously being in the sun. So this is a staple for me when I just don't want to think about it. I don't want to be too precise. I don't want to worry about it patching or lifting or adding texture. My only complaint is the shade range is absolutely horrible on this, so that's super disappointing. The formula is great. I actually like it more than the original Butter Bronzers, so I really hope that they will expand their shade ranges really with all of their products, but I do have to say that this is one of my most used bronzers that I found this year. All right, so now let's talk blush. This was probably the hardest category for me. I've been a blush fanatic for years, and now blush is really in, so there's been a ton of releases this year. I have to give it to the Jaclyn Cosmetics Rouge Romance Powder Blush Palettes. Both colors are absolutely stunning. I'm wearing a mixture of them today. You have this cool-toned version, and then she does have a warm tone. These are just such a good formula. They remind me almost of like a MAC powder blush, not overly pigmented, where you you know can look like a clown very easily these are not ones that you have to be super careful with but they're not so sheer that you're not getting any pigment they're kind of perfect you can just swipe on a couple layers and be out the door the colors look wild in the pan but because they're not overly pigmented very user-friendly just a stunning formula so I had to give these a shout out and of course I couldn't mention blush without my favorite release of the year which is the Patrick Ta blush palette I went on a hunt for this when I first saw a sneak peek of it. I did a review. I was in love with this and I still am. This has three powders, three creams. His formula is top tier, like one of the best on the market. So easy to use. Now the powders are very pigmented. The creams are buildable, so just keep that in mind. The colors are gorgeous. If you love a punchy blush, you will love this. And his formula is really interesting because he formulates it so that you can use the powders first and then the creams, which is basically backwards from what everyone says in the beauty world. The creams just really give you a a beautiful glow to the skin without being sticky or greasy. Highly recommend. The creams go over powder perfectly. One of my favorite releases of the entire year. A newer release to me, but I had to give it a shout out because it is gorgeous. This is the new Melt Cosmetics blush palette. I cannot stop using this. This one is very pigmented. Specifically this shade and this shade like intense, so be careful. And I'm telling you like be careful because if you dip in and go right on your skin, it's gonna be insane. Now these three are more buildable. This is one of those recent releases I was going back and forth on including, but it has been top drawer since I've tried it. I've not stopped using it. I love mixing this shade and this shade. It just gives me that gorgeous baby doll flush. And if I want more of that peachy 
burnt look, I'll dip into this shade and mix with these. It's truly a stunning formula. I'm a huge fan of Melt Blushes. When I saw this palette, I was so excited for it and I love it. I knew I would. I also have to give it to the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blushes. Now I purchased these when they came out a while ago and I really didn't get the hype and then everybody went crazy on TikTok. They thought that Kylie Jenner used these so they sold out. They went viral. So I pulled them back out and I love them. They're so beautiful. These are so buildable and the colors are really like what dreams are made of for me. Baby pink and then a coral. These are very sheer so they are buildable. These are are ones that you can do like four or five layers and you get this beautiful it's almost like a soft neon glow it really is special I really hope they do more shades of these these have also been sold out forever but they really are just this soft glowy look without having like glitter or enhancing your texture so I had to give these a shout out because ever since they went viral they've been top drawer now when I was thinking about blushes there were so many cream blushes I love this year like the melt cream blushes the say cream blushes there's more that I'm forgetting but there was one that stood out to me for the formula but also the color which is the M cosmetics stick cream blush in the color passion this looks scary, but I have to say this is gorgeous on the skin. Every time I use this or I saw someone use it, it was just truly like a sunburn in a cream blush. This also does go beautifully over your powder, which is something that I look for. So when you swatch it, it's very intense and it is pigmented, but I just use a beauty blender and I take it directly off the actual cream blush or off my hand. And then I'll just go on my cheeks over my nose absolutely gorgeous. I cannot rave about this enough. There are six colors, I think, in this uh, line of cream blushes, but this shade, something special about it. Every time I wear it, I just feel beautiful, so I had to recommend this. Now, in terms of highlighter, there really was only one I could think of that was a standout for me this year. I still love the ones from last year, and I really do tend to reach for the same handful of highlighters, but I wanted to give a shout out to the Jaclyn Cosmetics highlighter in the shade Iced. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's very blinding. It is not, you know, a natural highlighter. I just love the color of this. I love how reflective it is. It very much reminds me of the Nabla in Ozone, but this is a more creamy thicker formula. It's one of those that feels almost like a cream powder hybrid, so it's not flying all over chunks of glitter or dusty. So if you really love blinding highlighters, this would be the new one I found this year that has stayed in top drawer. Moving on to eyeshadow, this was another category that is incredibly hard to only choose a few, but I try to think about my most used. The first one is the Tom Ford Eye Color Quad in Body Heat. So this is a newer formula to me, but I have to say every time I've used this, it's just easy. Everybody raves about his wet dry formula, and I finally tried it this year, and it just is one of those formulas that is so effortless. You can put these all in the crease on the lid. They are shimmers, but there's really no powder kick up. It really is a special formula. So every time I've used this, it's just super easy and I love the look that I come up with. So I wanted to give this a shout out because I am now a Tom Ford Eye Quad fan. Also had to show some love to the Scott Barnes Snatural Palette. This palette is absolutely gorgeous. The shades in here that really stand out to me are these toppers. They almost have like a glitter infused in them. They are just absolutely stunning. I use this shade a ton. Also use this shade and the mattes in here are pigmented. I love the colors. You can go more cool or you can go more warm and then there's tons of deep colors in here. I know Scott Barnes is expensive but I have to say again every time I use this palette I've loved the look I came up with. It's just a staple when I want to do a neutral look which is what I prefer most days. Also have to shout out the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. I probably use this palette the most. I used it today. Honestly, most of the time I'm doing a wing and I'm just going to use this shade or this shade or even this one in the crease and be good to go. This is a buildable formula. I feel like it would be great for beginners. I love the size of it. I love the colors of it. I love the formula. This is just a no-brainer when I don't want to think about it. I just want to throw some mattes on and be done. I reach for this one. Now for a similar effect, but if I want a little glitz and glam, I have to shout out the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. So it has two creams in here that are great as bases. They really grab 
on to the shadow and they don't crease, they don't get all over your eye. And then you have these beautiful topper shades that are just super iridescent. I call them sophisticated glitter. You just tap them on and it just gives you this beautiful glowy glittery look. The mattes are stunning. I really want him to do this palette in different colors. Obviously this is neutral. I would love to see maybe like a smoky cool tone version or maybe even like a romantic maroon burgundy version. Love, love, love this palette. Love Patrick Ta in general, so I had to give this one a mention as well. And the last palette that really stood out to me is the only palette that has a little bit of color. This is gonna be the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. Absolutely love this palette. This is a cool tone pink lover's dream. I love pink obviously. My cheeks, my lips, my eyes, I really love it. So I love that I have all these pink options to use in my crease. And then you have these beautiful different toppers and metallics. The only shade I don't like is like the Petri dish shade, which I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's not my thing, but the mattes in here blend beautifully. They actually do show up, even though this is more of like a pastel palette. It is very cool toned. It's just one of those special color stories in my collection, and I just love the tones in here, and it blends beautifully. I love her palettes like this. I can't wait to see what she releases this coming year. Quickly want to go over mascara. I have two that stood out to me. The first one, Lily Lashes, Triple X Mascara. Absolutely adore it. I'm wearing it today. This gives me probably the most volume and length of any other mascara. It just works perfectly. It is more of a dry formula, so it doesn't get all over. I just absolutely adore this mascara. I originally was sent this a while ago, and I used it for months, and it dried up, and then I went ahead and repurchased. Honestly, just can't live without this mascara. If I had to throw away all my other mascaras, I'd probably hang on to this one only. Another mascara I fell in love with this year was the Melt Cosmetics Supernatural. Now, this one is not as dry as the Lily Lashes, but it gives me tons of length and volume. It's very similar to the Rare Beauty, I would say, in terms of what it does for my lashes. Again, I really like that mascara as well, but this one is great for volume and building. I just really have fallen in love with this mascara specifically in the past few months. I must have missed this because I think it came out originally with a Beetlejuice collection, and then it came onto Sephora, and I grabbed it. It is phenomenal. It's a little bit messier, I will say, than the Lily Lashes, just because it is more of a wet formula, but if you're looking Looking for volume and length in one, definitely try this one out. Now for brows, I've talked about these products so many times, I'm gonna move very quickly. This is the Huda Beauty Balm Brows. I use the shade Medium Brown. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny brow pencil, perfect for brow-like strokes. I do go through it quickly, but I love how precise it is. I use it to underline and then to add strokes in. I highly recommend this. And then the Makeup by Mario Master Hold Brow Gel. Again, I go through this quickly, but I just love the formula. It's so lightweight. You just comb it through and then you can use the longer bristles to really push it against your skin. It holds all day. It's not sticky or goopy. I've been through multiples of these. I go through them quickly, but I really love them. So these are top, top, top drawer products I found this year. Now, in terms of eyeliner, I found a liquid liner that I love this year, which is the Huda Beauty Life Liner Quick and Easy. Essentially, this is like the KVD tattoo liner, but in a smaller component. This is great for detail work. It's one of those that you can really get the flick. I just love this. It's a brush tip, so I highly recommend this. I still use my KVD uh, vegan tattoo liners. I hate that name, KVD Vegan Tattoo, whatever. The KVD Tattoo Liners, I love those, but this is a smaller version, so when I really want that precision, I reach for this one. And then I also have really been enjoying, and I wanted to shout this out, it's fairly new to me, but the Glamnetic Ultimate Liner Duo. Now they do sell these separately in brown and black, but this is a liner pen that's for magnetic lashes, which takes me into Glamnetic. These are recent finds of mine, and I have to say, so, so easy. If you're someone that struggles with lash glue, you struggle with how long to let it dry, it gets goopy, and you don't wanna mess with it, this is a game changer for me. So this is a felt tip, which isn't my favorite, but it's doable. So oftentimes I will do my wing with the Huda Beauty or the uh, tattoo liner. And then you just take this and put it right on the lash line. I do usually about two coats. And then you just put on magnetic lashes. So these are from Glamnetic. I've worn these maybe seven or eight times now and they look literally brand new. Very pricey, but these are gonna last me forever. Highly, highly, highly recommend checking out Glamnetic 
Fanatic specifically, and I think this liner pen is a huge game changer just because it's not goopy, it's very thin, it's not getting all in my lashes and making them sticky and clumpy. So these have been two new favorites that have really wowed me this year. We finally made it to lips, our last category. I feel like I've been talking for like two hours and I'm trying to move quickly. So I have quite a few lip products. I'm gonna go through them quickly. Uh, lip products are something that's hard for me because honestly, I switch it up all the time. Of course, I have formulas that I love, but sometimes I don't really love the formula of something, but I'll love the shade. So it might just be something that I'll use because the shade is very unique to my collection or I just like the way it looks. Oftentimes, I might add like one, two, three different lip products and I just kind of add and then change. If I throw on something that's a little bit too dark, I'll use something else to make it lighter. So I do a lot of lip combos, but there's some standout formulas that I had to recognize this year. First of all, you already know the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Bombs. Absolutely incredible, 10 out of 10. The watermelon is the best in my opinion. These just coat your lips. I use them every night and they just smell incredible. The watermelon is my favorite. I love the banana, I love the mango. The Really the only one that I don't love is the chocolate. It's just not my favorite. This gives a beautiful little pink tint. It just coats your lips and gives you such hydration. Doesn't break me out overnight. I just cannot recommend this product enough. One of my favorite finds of the year. So I had to touch on this even though it's a lip balm. Oftentimes when I start my videos out, I will put on my lip stain and then I'll put this over just to give me hydration. It's just such a great formula. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend that you do. Now in terms of lip liners, I have so many formulas that I circle through just because it depends on the color, depends on really what tone I'm going for. But I recently found this Powerline lip liner from Buxom in High Def Honey. I'm obsessed with this. I am wearing it today. It's just the perfect brown for me. The formula is not overly creamy, but it's also not dry. It doesn't get gunky. Just really a fan of this. And then of course, the Melt lip liners. These are the Perfectionist lip pencils. These are more dry. They're very much like MAC lip pencils, if you're familiar, but really, really been enjoying these. I have pretty much, actually I do have every shade because I'm crazy like that. I loved their lip liners before, but they reformulated them and I like these too. So really, you just can't go wrong. If you're looking for a lip liner that lasts all day, that's lightweight, that doesn't get gunky, this is a great find. Now, in terms of lipstick, I truly use so many. It was very hard to kind of choose, but I have to shout out the Charlotte Tilbury Cover Star. This is a gorgeous, basically just a light nude. It's more of a brown toned kind of peachy nude. So this goes great with like a smoky eye, cool toned eye look, something like that. Definitely wanna use a lip liner because it is more of a lighter shade, but this is one I use a ton. Every day, if I want more of the pink look, I cannot get enough of this Bare Minerals Grace. It's just gorgeous. The formula on this is more hydrating, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury is more matte. So this one is like an everyday go-to, just no fuss, goes beautifully with really any lip liner I have. And again, I do tend to prefer pink lipsticks. Another pink lipstick I love is the YSL Slim Matte Lipstick in 24. This is actually being discontinued, but I did find it on sale. So I picked up another one. This is a gorgeous, baby pastel pink. It looks so pretty with lip liners that I use, which are typically like brown or nude. I'm wearing this today. Highly, highly, highly recommend if you like baby pink lipsticks like I do. And then the last one is more of a hydrating your lips with better. This is the YSL lipstick. I don't know how to say it. The Volupte Shine lipstick in the shade 86 Mauve. Absolutely gorgeous, so comfortable on the lips. This is my lips, but better. It just looks so beautiful, makes my lips look so hydrated. I love this formula when I'm doing more of a natural look. It just gives me that high shine, smells incredible. I love this formula in general, but the shade 86 really stands out. It just looks so perfect on my lips. It almost gives me like that bitten look just because it is my lips but better. So highly recommend if you've not tried this formula, it's stunning. I have one liquid lipstick formula that has really wowed me this year, and that is the Scott Barnes Liquid Lipstick. Now this is a matte liquid lipstick, but it's very thin, nice and pigmented. I love the shade Strut. I wear this all the time. Anytime I'm gonna go somewhere and I'm gonna be wearing a mask and I want my lipstick to last, or if I'm just gonna go somewhere where I really want my makeup to wear well, I will stick with this formula. I have a few different shades, but this is my favorite color. I just dab a little bit in the center of my lips. It blends 
blends beautifully and wears a super long time without like getting heavy, cracking, and doing all the stuff that liquid lipsticks do. So this is my favorite liquid lipstick true matte formula that I found this year. And to finish off, I have two gloss formulas to mention. Of course, again, I have a million that I like, but this year I really fell in love with the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Heat in the shade Hot Cherry. This is just so high shine, very similar to the Jaclyn Cosmetics lip oils, just that beautiful juicy look to the lips. It does have a little bit of a tingle to it, so if you're very sensitive, I would skip this, but it just makes you look like you've had a popsicle, which we all know I love. Just very juicy, almost like that clear jelly look to it. It's not overly pigmented, but it gives you that high shine. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous lip gloss. I know she came out with different shades of this, but I'd love to see like a really neon hot orange just because it is sheer and so high shine that I feel like it would just give you sort of a glow to your lips. Again, like a popsicle look, which is what I love. So I had to shout this one out. And then lastly, I'm sure you're not shocked to hear the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses. I just absolutely love this formula. It coats the lips. It's very much like the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm, but in a gloss form. So I wouldn't use these before bed, but I do use them before I do my makeup. I usually use the Too Faced or I'll use this one, which is Daisy Pink. These just coat the lips. They're very thick. They give you a ton of hydration, and these are high shine. The Too Faced isn't high shine, but it's very, very hydrating, and it gives you that balmy feel. This one is sort of a high you can wear it over lipstick to give you a really high shine glossy finish or you can use it as a hydrating sort of lip balm lip treatment. It is plumping but it doesn't hurt your lips. It just smooths your lips out and makes them look high shine and plump so I love this formula. You guys know I've raved about this so many times and my favorite would have to be the Daisy Pink. All right, guys, so I think that is everything for this video and my best products of 2021. I'm sure none of these shocked you. If you look in my description boxes, I usually do link what I'm wearing. A lot of the time I'm wearing these products or I've mentioned them in favorites or Sephora recommendations videos. So hopefully this gave you a roundup of the standout products I tried this year. Now, of course, I'm still loving a ton of products from 2020 and 2019. So of course, I haven't forgot about those, but I really just wanted to focus in on what I found in 2021. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions about products that maybe you're thinking of picking up or wondering my opinion on, definitely comment down below. We can have a little chat. I will link all the products that I talked about today down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.